All right, welcome back. We're going to do um, Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure this time. And in da Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure, this is this is one where um, we actually are going to combine some gases together. Um, this is a really important concept in biology as well because this is how gases diffuse. And so if you've had ANP or anything like that, you know that usually they will diffuse down a concentration gradient and oxygen and carbon dioxide are lipid soluble and so they will just go bloop through the membrane. And so it's important, um, this concept of partial pressure and what happens when one is higher or lower. So the partial pressure of a gas is just the pressure that that gas exerts on a mixture. Okay, so if you have two gases together, you have two atmosphere pressures of helium and four atmospheres of argon, and you open that and mix them together, you're going to end up with two plus four atmospheres, which is six atmospheres of total gas. But the partial pressure will remain two for helium and four for argon. So pressure depends on the total number of gas particles, not the type, okay? That's important. Not the type, but just the number. So if it's a helium, if it's helium molecules, if it's argon molecules, if it's oxygen molecules, it really doesn't matter. Um, they all kind of count the same as far as the total pressure. So the total pressure exerted by the gases in the mixture is the sum of the partial pressures of all those gases. Love it because it's so easy. The total is P1 plus P2 plus P3, etc. So at STP, we know that a mole of pure gas um, will be in a volume of 22.4 liters and will exert the same pressure as one mole of a, a gas mixture. So you've got one mole of nitrogen and it will exert one atmosphere. If you've got 0.4 moles of oxygen and 0.6 moles of helium, that's one mole total and it will also exert one atmosphere. Even if you've got three different gases together, that also will just give you the one atmosphere. Um, I don't know if any of y'all scuba dive, but I used to scuba dive quite a bit. And a lot of, we have to be able to calculate how much nitrogen is, we've been accumulating in our bodies. Um, when you dive, the increased pressure causes nitrogen to dissolve in blood. At normal, normal pressure, nitrogen does not dissolve in your blood. And so there's enough pressure that pushes that gas into the liquid of your plasma. Um, if you rise too fast and, and, you know, as you rise from the water, your pressure is decreasing because you're going to have less and less water over your head, the dissolved nitrogen will, be, will start coming out of that. And if you come up really fast, the nitrogen comes out really fast. And so it forms bubbles in your blood um, and it can cause a lot of damage. And they call that the bends. Helium which doesn't dissolve in the blood is mixed with oxygen um, and so you can breathe a, a helium oxygen mixture if you're going to go really deep and then you can stay down longer because you won't accumulate nitrogen because breathing air is going to have some nitrogen in it no matter what. So us folks on the surface um, the air we breathe is also a mixture. It has a lot of nitrogen in it. And of course, it also has to have oxygen and then it has some other, you know, trace gases as well. Um, but, you know, carbon dioxide, carb, um, oxygen, nitrogen, um, and, you know, trace amounts of things such as argon. And depending on where you live, it might, you know, be a lot of um, H2O and you might have what's called particulate matter even floating around in there. Look how much nitrogen you have in breathing air. About 78%. Um, also 21% oxygen is optimum. And then of course you'll have some carbon dioxide because we breathe out. Um, hopefully we haven't cut down all the trees so they will return the oxygen to us. Um, 
So in these partial pressures, they're really not that difficult. Um, you know that the total pressure is going to be equal to the sum of those pressures. And so really the only big thing is that you've got to make sure that you're in the same units because you can't add 0.45 atmospheres and, so, and, and uh, 855 millimeters of mercury together because they're different units. So you have to get those units the same. And so you convert your, you know, and again, you, it doesn't matter which way you do it. Um, sometimes you get a little bit different answer, but it should still be well within the ballpark. So since you've got atmospheres in this problem and millimeters of mercury, then um, they chose to just um, change the atmospheres into uh, millimeters of mercury. So you now have 342 millimeters of mercury of oxygen and 855 millimeters of mercury of helium. And so the total pressure is going to be the sum of those two. Don't you like this one? You just add them together. So as, once you have them in the same units, you just add them together. Um, if you're given the total pressure in one of them, then you just subtract. Okay, so um, we're going to look at this one. For a deep dive, the scuba diver uses a mixture of helium and oxygen with a pressure of eight atmospheres. Okay, so that's giving us what? The total helium and oxygen. If the oxygen has a partial pressure of 1280 millimeters of mercury, what is the partial pressure of helium? So we know that the total pressure is equal to the partial pressure of helium plus the partial pressure of oxygen. So we have eight atmospheres, okay, is equal to oxygen is 1280 millimeters of mercury. So what are we going to have to do with that? If we're going to leave it in atmospheres, then we'll just say 1280 millimeters of mercury times 760, the magic number, is one atmosphere. All right, and so 1280 divided by 760 gives us approximately 1.68. I'll just leave it at that, 1.68. Um, which is the oxygen atmospheres. Okay, so the partial pressure of helium is going to be 8 minus 1.68. Okay, now notice I did this and without looking to see what the answer was asking for. So I could have made it a lot easier on myself, couldn't I? And I could have done it in millimeters of mercury, but not already have it. But that's okay. You can do it either way. So my partial pressure of helium is 6.32 atmospheres. So I just have to convert it back, don't I? So 760 millimeters of mercury over one atmosphere. See what I'm saying? If I if I'd looked to see what the units of my answer was, I could have saw, saved myself a bunch of trouble. But that's all right. There's always a way to get back. And so I got 4803. All right, now you literal people are going to be going, oh, that's not on there. That's not one of those answers. Well, 4803 is close enough for government work on, on 4800 because it ain't 2040 and it ain't 520, right? So 4800 millimeters mercury is correct. Now, I, was, I mentioned this earlier. In the lungs, your oxygen comes into the blood. You know, you breathe in the air. Your lungs are going to pull the oxygen out and then they're going to release the carbon dioxide. So in the lungs over here, when, when you're breathing in, you're going to have high oxygen and low carbon dioxide. So when your deoxygenated blood comes over to the, ox, to the um, alveoli in your lungs, it's going to be low oxygen. So as it goes through these alveoli, it's natural for that high partial pressure oxygen to go into the blood vessels. And so when it leaves, it's going to be high oxygen and be pumped out to 
your tissue. So it's going to be high oxygen, and when it gets to the tissue, your tissue is going to be low oxygen and higher CO2. So what's going to happen is it's going the oxygen is going to go into the tissue because it's you know it's approximately a hundred and it's only 30 in the tissue so it's going to go in there really easy and then you're going to be still about 40 CO2 in, in your blood and this is going to be greater than 50 and so the extra CO2 is going to go in and then be carried away and so that's how blood gases work in the body and it's really cool because you're looking at partial pressures of the gases so oxygen flows into the tissues because the partial pressure of oxygen is higher in the blood than in the tissue. Your CO2 flows out of the tissues because the partial pressure of CO2 is higher in the tissue than in the blood. And these are like rules of thumb, but in your oxygenated blood, you should, you know, like, and, and if you've ever heard anybody talk about a blood gas, Okay, using an oximeter or whatever, you want to be a hundred. You know, you want to be at least ninety. Um, your CO2 around forty. In your deoxygenated blood, you're going to be around forty oxygen, and a, you know a little bit higher in the um, carbon dioxide. Um, but in the tissues, that's where it gets low oxygen because it's using it all up, and it's producing carbon dioxide as part of cellular respiration so um, if you have if you have low oxygen then the oxygen coming in that's high is going to go right into that tissue um, and then it's going to take the carbon dioxide right out because it's only going to be 40 between 40 and 46 and it's going to be 50 or more in the tissue And so inspiration actually works the same way. You, insp you bring in that air. Um, and remember, this is partial pressure. So you've got 594. If it's, if it's at sea level and it's 760 millimeters of mercury, 594 is nitrogen. Look, you're going to get rid of it. Okay, so you're not going to keep that nitrogen around because it doesn't do you any good. Unless you're scuba diving and you got more pressure on you, which pushes the nitrogen into your blood. You'll have about 160 of that. It's going to be oxy oxygen that you're breathing in. You're going to breathe out a bunch of oxygen too, right? And the air in the alveoli is going to also have about 100 uh, millimeters of mercury in that. And hopefully this carbon dioxide, you know, keeps keeps up. And you will have water vapor as well. Notice that you're breathing in a lot less water vapor than you're breathing out. And again, the CO2 and the water vapor are products of your cellular respiration. And so that's you're, you're getting rid of that as a waste product. This last thing is just a little concept map that I put on here. Sometimes these help people kind of get the big picture if you're a big picture person um, because this just kind of like takes this whole chapter of gases and you describe gases um, with the kinetic molecular theory which we did in the very beginning. We talked about what their characteristics are okay, and that they do exert pressure. They follow our gas laws okay and then here are our gas laws that we talked about boils P and D D and T for Charles P and T for Gay-Lussac and then the combined gas law which takes all P, B and T the volume in moles are related by Avogadro's law and by molar volume at STP which you remember is 0 degrees C and 1 atmosphere um, a gas mixture, we're going to use partial pressure laws. Um, moles or volumes of pure gases, we're going to use molar volume to, to, use, to um, calculate those. Okay, so it's just kind of an overview. I just thought I'd throw that in at the end. All right, I believe we have finally finished the gas loss chapter. So congratulations if you stayed with me, and I will see you on the boards.